Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, um, today I want to talk about a bit of a fun topic, um, and that is the topic of electric guitar gear, effects and pedals and all of that kind of fun stuff. Um, now, just so you know what I'm going to cover today, this is especially for those of you who are playing um, worship guitar in church. Um, although, if you don't play at church and you don't play worship, these um, issues are relevant too. But that's mostly, you know, my genre, and uh, and I love that. So for those of you who are playing worship guitar at church, and also this is mostly for those of you who are either beginners or intermediate players. So whether you're just starting out learning electric guitar, I'm gonna, gonna give you some of, of my advice and tips on what gear to use. Um, or for those of you maybe you've been playing a while and you just wanna get to the next level and you wanna know what some, some good gear, uh, not extravagant gear, but some decent gear that you can get, or how to build a, a, a simple pedal board to get kind of sounds for worship music and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so from beginner to intermediate, so if you're a more advanced player and you've been playing for years and years, this is not gonna be helpful for you. Um, but if you're just learning, or maybe you're transi transitioning into electric, you've been playing acoustic for many years and you're going into the world of electric, you wanna know how you can get some good sounds, what pedals, what basic pedals you need um, to get kind of worship sounds and that, that kind of thing. This is for you. So it's lots of fun, the world of electric guitar is lots of fun, but um, you just need some basic tools to know, um, especially if you're playing at church, how can I get the right sounds? How can I play those worship songs? What pedals do I need? What gear do I need to make a good sound? So, you know, often, you will, especially if you're a younger player, often you'll see on YouTube or on the internet these massive pedal boards and these guys using two huge amps in stereo um, and you're just like, wow, do I, do I have to get all of that gear um, right away? The answer is no, um, not at all. You can start with some simple gear and, and achieve simple sounds and, and it still will work really well in a worship context. So I want to help you out. If that's where you're at, I want to help you out with that today. So please resist the urge to go out and buy all of this expensive gear, especially if you're a younger player or just learning electric. Please resist the urge to go out and go and buy all of this expensive gear. Often I say this to younger players, let the level of your gear match the level of your playing ability. So, you know, if you're a younger player or a less mature, confident player, you want simple gear. Um, if you're uh, an intermediate player and you're a little bit more skillful now, then you want to kind of get the next level of gear. Of course, if you're a professional player, you probably already got great gear anyway so you know you don't need to watch this video so let the the level of your gear match the level of your playing um i find it kind of funny how i see a lot of younger players only been playing like a couple of years electric guitar and they've got all of this expensive gear and they, they're not even very confident on the electric guitar they don't even know how to play you know some of the worship riffs and stuff very well but they've got all of this expensive gear um, I actually would discourage that. Um, like I said, let the level of your gear match the level of your playing. And I think it's much better actually to spend money on guitar lessons than spend your money on guitar gear um, if you're still learning. So my encouragement to you if you're a younger player, go get lessons. Get a great guitar teacher or at least find someone at church who's a, who's a more mature player who you can sit with sometimes and, and get some tips from. Learn from them learn the skills of guitar rather than just the gear and the equipment that you need to make those sounds. That's part of it. But the most important thing is that you become a skillful player. Um, you know, great guitar players can take a average instrument and even an average amplifier and average gear and they can make them sound amazing because of the skill that they have. But you know, if you're uh, not a confident and not a good guitar player, even if you have expensive gear, it's still not gonna sound good. So that's my advice to those of you who are learning and who are younger players. So let me just give you um, some tips. These, this is my opinion, but I think a lot of people you know, who've been playing for many years would agree with these tips. Um, so firstly, let me uh, talk about those of you who are beginners. 
Um, and then I'm going to move on to those of you who are maybe more intermediate players wanting to get a basic pedal board together, maybe a, get a good amp and that kind of thing. I'll give you some tips. So firstly, for those of you who are brand new beginners, here's my advice. Like I said, don't go out and buy tons of expensive equipment until you're ready for that, until your skill level is up to that level and the, you know you're going to use it well. Um, but if you're beginning, um, just get a simple cheap guitar it doesn't have to be a brand name uh, my first electric guitar was a no-name copy of a fender stratocaster it was like under 200 dollars used and that was my first electric guitar and uh, my first uh, electric amplifier was this tiny little pv transistor solid state amp looking back it sounded pretty terrible but i just practiced in my room every day with my cheaper guitar and my cheaper amp and I learned all the basics on that. So just start simple. You know, you can go and get a Fender Squire or one of the cheaper or like I said, just a, a no-name copy of a Fender Telecaster or Fender Stratocaster or copy of a Gibson. Something like that. Something that you like the look of, something that sounds good to you, something that feels nice to play. That it's fine to start like that. We all have to start like that. So please don't spend tons of money on expensive gear um, if you're not at that level yet. Um, in terms of amps and pedal boards, again, if you're a brand new beginner, uh, you can just get a really simple, cheap amp. That's what I did. Um, but these days, there's some great little digital amps that you can get. So again, for beginners, I actually have one here. Um, there's amps like this. This is a, um, a Vox VT. 20 plus this one so it's a, it's a, the smaller one but that's all you need if you're going to practice at home um, or even kind of jam around with your friends at you know church youth ministry or whatever um, this uh, will do the job for practice at home and it can also be loud enough if you're playing at, you know at your youth ministry or young adults ministry jamming around there it will do a fine um, job it'll get the job done and the reason I suggest amps like this. Um, Vox does a series called the VT series um, of digital amps and at the top of the amp, I'll show you here, they have different um, amp models so you can get like Fender type sounds, you can get Vox type sounds, you just see here it is, so you can get Fender kind of amp type sounds, um, Vox kind of sounds and then more high gain distorted kind of amps there um, and then you've got some effects built into the amp as well. So you've got overdrive, compressor, you've got chorus, tremolo, delay, and reverb as well. And that's kind of all in the amp, if you can see that there. So it's probably a bit, bit dusty because I don't use it. Um, so they're fine. Um, just get something like that. That's what I would recommend. They're not too expensive. Um, it's a good place to start. Fender also does a series called the Mustang. Uh, series of amps, Fender Mustang amps, and they, they're a similar kind of thing. You have different amp models, you have some effects in there, you can save presets. Um, I think you can even get a foot switch. Um, so that's a good place to start. I think Line 6, uh, I'm not sure what Line 6 is doing these days with, with their actual, actual amps, but Line 6 makes digital amps as well. Go check them out. Um, that's a good place to start if you're beginning and learning. That's what I would recommend. Uh, also, in terms of pedal boards, um, if you're on a budget and you just want to mess around with, with different effects and stuff like that, you know, there's lots of um, little compact multi-effects uh, pedals these days, like Zoom. Zoom makes a lot of little multi-effects pedals, so they'll have like overdrive, they have different, you know, in a little box, and they'll have overdrive and delay and reverb and, and um, chorus and stuff like that, and maybe a little volume pedal. That's fine if you're beginning, just start there, check out Zoom, check out Boss. Boss does some little uh, multi-effects units as well. So yeah, um, just get a simple guitar, get a simple amp, and maybe a simple little effects pedal if you're wanting to experiment and then you're wanting to play in your church or in a, in a smaller ministry group or something like that, start there. Um, however, for those of you who are, you've been playing for a number of years, um, and you want to get a better sound, you want to get a better tone, um, maybe you're playing regularly now, whether that's at your youth ministry, your young adults ministry, or even at church on Sundays, 
and you're playing more regularly, you get more serious, your skill level is, is um, growing more and more, you're confident with your chords and scales, and you can play a lot of the contemporary worship stuff pretty well. Here's what I would say to you guys, let me give you some tips on um, amp and pedals and stuff like that. If you're starting out, or you know, maybe like I said, if you're transitioning to electric guitar and you're like, where do I start with pedals? I don't know where to start, but I want a decent sound. I don't want a cheap sound. So if that's you, what I would suggest is get rid of, <laughs> um, sounds funny now, but get rid of the cheaper amps, get rid of the cheaper uh, multi-effects pedals and go with individual pedals and find a good tube amp. Um, that would be my advice if you want to go to the next level in your playing and tone. And if you have a really cheap guitar, I would suggest save up um, and buy a better guitar. Um, or what you could do, a lot of guys, they, they buy something like a Mexican Telecaster, um, which isn't too expensive and then they will change out the pickups because often what happens with cheaper guitars, if you have a Squire, Fender Squire, or a Mexican made, or any of those cheaper brands, often the electronics and the pickups are much cheaper and they can sound muddy and they just don't sound as good. So if you don't have the money, um, buy a Mexican made Fender Tally or something like that and just buy some good pickups and put it in, in there. Or what I did when I was younger and getting more serious with my playing, I just saved up and I bought an American um, made uh, Fender Stratocaster and it's been with me for, for ages and ages, nearly 20 years I think, and it's still going, it's a great guitar. So save up and get a better guitar, but most importantly, the most important piece of your equipment is actually your amplifier because that's where most of the sound comes from. So what I would say is get a good tube amp. Um, there's lots of great digital amps these days, but I still, for me personally, I still can't beat a really good tube amp. So some smaller tube amps that I would recommend, again, for those of you who are just wanting to go to the next level, you don't want to go crazy big and crazy expensive, but you want something decent that will do the job, go Offender Blues Junior. Um, great little amps, they're, you know, about that size, they're 15 watts, but they've got lots of power. Um, and if you buy them used, they're not too expensive. Fender Blues Jr. is a great little tube amp. I actually use one, um, and I think it sounds great. Um, Fender Bass Breaker is a new series of Fender amp tube amps called the Bass Breaker series. I believe they make a 15 watt version and bigger versions as well. So get a Fend maybe get a Fender Bass Breaker. Um, again, if you get it used, it's gonna be cheaper. Um, or something like a Vox AC15, or even an AC10, which is the smaller version, might do the job. It's still a tube amp, um, and uh, they will sound great. So start with something like that. There's lots of other amp brands as well, but start there. Fender, Blues Junior, or Bass Breaker, Vox AC15 or AC10, just something simple like that, and I think that you'll be impressed with the tone um, that you can get out of a real tube amp. And then in terms of pedals, um, I, I'm just gonna go through four pedals that I think are pretty much almost essential, especially for worship guitar. And if you're starting out, this is where I would start if you're starting to build you know, an individual kind of pedal board, not a multi-effects unit. But using individual pedals, here's what I'd go for first. Like I said, get a good little tube amp, like Fender Blues Junior. And then what you want is a nice little overdrive, classic overdrive Ibanez Tube Screamer. Um, this is the um, TS9DX, the Turbo Tube Screamer, but you don't have to get that. Just get an Ibanez TS9 or TS808, very famous pedals. And they're more of a lighter, light to medium gain overdrive. Um, so get a good overdrive pedal. That's where I would start. And then secondly, if you only had two effects, if I only had two effects, I would have an overdrive like this. By the way, you can get cheaper versions of these. You can get an Ibanez um, Tube Screamer Mini, which is gonna be, it's smaller, but it's, it's cheaper. Uh, and you can get clones, like cheaper clones, such as Joyo does, does pedals that, that copy the Tube Screamer. They're made in China, they're cheaper, but apparently they still sound pretty good. I think it's called the Joyo Vintage Drive. 
Um, you could also get something like a um, soul food, electro harmonics soul food. Sounds pretty good. I've tried them before. They sound fine. Uh, but get a first stage overdrive, like a tube screamer. And then the second pedal I would highly recommend, especially for worship stuff, is a delay pedal. This is the Boss DD7. Um, and it's, it's a great, great little pedal. You can do digital delay and analog delay. And you can even, um, you know, just a little bit of looping with this as well. Um, I have had this for many years and I used it uh, for many years as my main delay and it's fine. So get a good little overdrive pedal and get a delay pedal. If you have nothing else, just get those two pedals it would be a good start. Um, the next level, if you're wanting to go further, um, by the way, sorry, let me just mention with the delay pedal, um, make sure you get a delay pedal that has tap tempo. Uh, a lot of the worship stuff, you want to be in time. It has the dotted eight delay stuff and you want to be in time and get that bouncing delay effect. So the DD7 has tap tempo. And what I used to use was, I used to use this foot switch. You can tap it in on the pedal, but it's easier You get this boss foot switch and add it to the expression uh, output there and you can tap in the tempo of every song as it goes along um, and that is really handy okay so I, I would recommend starting with that uh, you can get the flashback delay I believe that does tap tempo TC electronic flashback delay um, there's lots of delay pedals like that that you can use so um, let's build just our first little pedal board here um, so start off with the first level lighter stage overdrive, we're gonna put the, the tube screamer there um, and a delay. But if you wanna to go to the next level, I would get a second stage overdrive. So, you know, in a lot of worship songs, especially the start can be kind of quiet and then the song gets bigger and you need more drive. So I would go a second stage overdrive. This is an Australian company called MI Audio. Um, this is called the Blue Boy. It's kind of like a, a tube screamer type pedal but it has a lot more gain and a lot more bass so um, other pedals like this would be the um, OCD by Full Tone and again I believe Joyo makes a copy of that pedal it's a lot cheaper called the Ultimate Drive or something um, there's tons of pedals that you could use as a second stage drive so I would go two stages of drive and then your delay with tap tempo and then the final pedal, if you only have four pedals on your board, I would go a reverb. This one's a little more expensive. It's New Neighbor, um, and it's called the Seraphim. But basically, it's the New Neighbor wet reverb, but it includes a shimmer mode, um, which is the octave, high octave. So, um, but it's a, it's a great reverb pedal. I would suggest if you're starting out, get something cheaper. Um, go a Boss RV5 or RV6. They're great solid um, reverb pedals. Um, Nunaba makes great uh, reverb pedals. There's tons of reverb pedals out today. Um, if you want to go a little bit more expensive, there's the Strymon Blue Sky. Um, so uh, another standard um, reverb pedal is the TC Electronics Hall of Fame. Lots of different reverb sounds in that. So this is what I would do. This would be my basic pedal board. Let me show it to you. So you got your first stage overdrive, tube screamer, run that. I, I, I used to run that on about 11 o'clock uh, on the game. So run it a bit lower. And then your second stage overdrive, I would normally run the gain a lot higher because you want, you know, for solos and lead lines and stuff, you want more gain. Um, then your delay pedal, like I said, you can add the foot switch for tap tempo, okay? Um, and I used to put it off the board here um, so I can tap it easily. That's not the best place to put it, but we'll put it there for now. And then a reverb. So if you want to do swells, you know, ambient kind of stuff in between songs, you use your delay and your reverb together. Um, and there we go. There's your first kind of basic simple pedal board. Um, and that's what, that's what I would use. And that's pretty much what I did use for many years. Um, and, and then I kept upgrading and getting 
you know, more pedals and that kind of thing. Um, the, the other pedal that you could add is a volume pedal. Um, so, you know, grab a volume pedal. You can get uh, volume mini volume pedals. I think Dunlop does a mini volume X pedal. And you can add that for doing swells and stuff like that. But I didn't include that in this because if you have a, a guitar like a Fender Strat, you can actually do volume swells with the, um, with the volume knob and it's not a big deal. So there we go. Um, just some tips for those of you who are, who are you know, kind of starting your first pedal boards um, and wanting to play, especially in, in, in church and that kind of thing. That's what I would do. But like I said, if you only have two pedals for now, get, get a good little tube amp and get like a, like a tube screamer or something like that and a good delay pedal and then kind of go from there. Um, and then after that, you can start to think about multi-delay pedals, if you're getting, you know, doing it all the time, getting a little bit more um, proficient in, in playing, get, get a multi-delay pedal, get a, um, you can get a compressor, um, and, you know, maybe a multi-reverb um, pedal and that kind of thing. But start there. That's my advice to you. It's my opinion, but I hope that helps you for those of you who are just starting out on this electric guitar journey. It's lots of fun. Um, enjoy the journey and just, you know, use it to be a blessing to people. Use it to be a blessing to your church. But most importantly, work on your guitar skills. Um, learn the songs really well. Learn the guitar parts to all of those worship songs. Um, and then it's going to sound good, you know, um, as you improve your gear as well. So I hope that helps. Um, God bless you guys and just enjoy that. And uh, I will see you next time.